Well, President Biden marked the historic confirmation of Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson to the Supreme Court. The event at the White House celebrated the first black woman set to sit on the bench. The 51-year-old was confirmed by the Senate Thursday in a 53 to 47 vote. Republicans Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, and Mitt Romney joined all 50 Democratic senators to approve the judge her, her appointment. During the event, Judge Jackson thanked the president, her family, and all the women who she says helped pave her way to the highest court in the land. So as I take on this new role, I strongly believe that this is a moment in which all Americans can take great pride. We have come a long way toward perfecting our union. In my family, it took just one generation to go from segregation to the Supreme Court of the United States. And it is an honor, the honor of a lifetime, for me to have this chance to join the court, to promote the rule of law at the highest level, and to do my part to carry our shared project of democracy and equal justice under law forward into the future. Harvard Law Professor Alan Jenkins and CBS News political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns join us now to talk more about this historic day. Alan, uh, talk to us about the significance here of Judge Jackson's appointment. You know, I, I tend to be pretty jaded when it comes to, I've seen a lot of uh, uh, Supreme Court nominations and uh, especially when it comes to White House events, but I, I found this event incredibly moving. The themes of family and faith standing on the shoulders, as Judge Jackson said, uh, soon to be Justice Jackson, of those black women and others who came before her. Uh, it, it really was a remarkable event uh, and very moving and inspiring. Uh, Judge Jackson's words in particular were extremely, while humble, extremely inspiring and kind of noted what this moment means for so many people of lots of different races uh, around the country and world. Yeah, the reverberations are incredible. Here in America, she said anything is possible. Another point, believing in the promise of America is why she's there. And that kind of uniform for so many, the I am the dream and the hope of the slave, the yes, we can, the candor, so much of it. Caitlin, I, I have to ask, moving beyond the uh, inspiration part of this, what are some of the first cases that Judge Jackson's expected to hear once she is being uh, she's seated on the court? Well, Michelle, absolutely moving words, especially when you consider them uh, coming against the backdrop of the White House behind her. Um, so certainly a, a celebratory day for this particular White House. Moving forward, uh, what we can expect in terms of cases is, is not exactly clear, because remember, she will not uh, be sworn in until after um, uh, the end of this session. And so uh, we will find out which cases come before the next court. Um, However, she has said during her confirmation hearings that she would recuse herself uh, if the court took up a, a case from uh, Harvard University um, uh, um, in, in terms of affirmative action. Uh, we also should note that, you know, she is going to be uh, one of three women on the liberal side of the court. Uh, so that means the, the liberal side of the court is, is all women. And uh, she could be authoring dissent opinions. And dissent opinions opinions are really critical, because they can uh, shape legislation later on, they can kind of shape a path forward later on. So even though she won't be uh, in the majority sometime, um, most of the time, you can expect, because this is a conservative-leaning co court, uh, those dissent opinions could be uh, really significant here. Um, and, and uh, you know, just again, the, you know, everything she was uh, talking about here, the, the historic nature of this pick, that kind of representation is just just so highly critical. Alan, we know Judge Jackson is uh, considered a, a liberal judge. She is replacing Stephen Breyer, who was considered a liberal judge. So she probably won't change the makeup of the court mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the way that it votes. But as we know, every justice brings their own experience mm -hmm. to the court, new justice, uh, new court. So, uh, you know, for example, she is the only sitting judge who will have brought a public defender right, background. Right. 
uh, to the huge. court. Big, totally huge. different perspective that she's bringing to the court. So how might she change the court uh, in that regard? And, and what might her experiences mean to the way, uh, to the type of judge that she might be? I, I predict that she's going to have huge influence over the course of her time on the court. Remember, she might be a justice until you know 2050 or even beyond. And so there are a number of ways in which she's likely to have influence. One is in dissents, as Caitlin said, uh, and often dissents become majorities, as we saw with issues of, of uh, marriage equality and, and other uh, issues. Uh, second, she will be teaching uh, her fellow justices. Every justice who comes on the court learns from their colleagues and from every new justice. Uh, my former boss, Justice Blackman, often talked about how much he had learned from serving with Thurgood Marshall uh, uh, who, when he was a Supreme Court justice. And so I think that's an important uh, way in which she's going to have influence. It's also the case that not every uh, case that comes before the Supreme Court neatly divides in terms of conservative and progressive views. And so as a public defender, as a working mom, which she and, and Judge Barrett are, uh, as, uh, as someone who has experienced, as Justice Sotomayor has, that intersection of discrimination uh, based on uh, the connection of the nexus of race and gender, uh, she's going to be bringing perspectives, teaching her colleagues, writing dissents, and also writing some majority opinions that are going to last for generations. Alan Jenkins and Caitlin Huey Burns, thank you both.